I appreciate the Lord this evening. I'm thankful to be in His house. Appreciate Roger coming out. Appreciate your willingness to serve the Lord. Not, if I can say it this way, there's a lot of people that have a lot of abilities and are not willing to use them to serve the Lord. And I appreciate those who are willing to go and willing to serve and willing to go to, to the church of a handful, willing to, to put in that effort. And I love you for it, Roger. I appreciate you. And I want to thank the Lord. Uh, about, you know, ten minutes ago, them stung like fire. And when I started thinking about getting ready to preach, he done took the pain away. I don't feel it no more. It's good. I want to turn to Jeremiah chapter 18 for just a short while tonight. We're going to read verses 1 through 6. Very familiar passage of Scripture. As Clarence always says, if you've been a Christian very long, the whole Bible should get pretty familiar. But this one's, a, this one's one of those passages, I, I, I've actually, I've never preached it before, but this is one of those passages, I'm pretty sure there's, a, there's like a law somewhere that every preacher has to preach it. Uh, it's, it's just such a, such a, and I say that jokingly, but it's just such a good passage of Scripture that's got so much, so many messages can, can, can be preached from here, but we're just going to focus on, focus on one of those tonight. Jeremiah 18, beginning in verse 1. It says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Sometimes we have to get where the Lord would have us to be before we can hear what he would have us to hear. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. You may be seated tonight. Let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege to be back in your house one more time. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege to call upon your name. Lord, we thank you for the privilege, Lord, to open up your holy word. Lord, we thank you for the songs, Lord, for the testimonies. Lord, for the prayers and the privilege of prayer, Lord. Lord, for those that are willing to pray for us, Lord, and for the privilege of praying for others. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for friends and for fellowship. Lord, and for the joy that is in the house of the Lord. I'm thankful for it tonight. Lord, now as we come to this part of the service, Lord, I pray that you can anoint our lips. Lord, that you can get our minds and our hearts on Jesus Christ. Lord, that it be all about you, Lord. That there be nothing of us. Lord, that your words would come out and ours would be kept quiet. Lord, that we can hide behind the cross of Calvary tonight. And Lord, that your will would be done in this part of the service as it has been to this point. Lord, I pray that we would uh, keep quiet all the things that are of us, Lord, and speak only what you'd have us to say. Lord, that you give us the words that are needful, Lord. And Lord, we'll not fail to give you the honor and the glory and the praise, Lord, for we know... Lord, it's not, it is not lost on us the fact, Lord, that we know we have no ability. But, Lord, we're coming to the one who has all ability. And we're thankful, Lord, for your touch and for your power. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. And amen. I want to bring just a short message tonight out of, out of verse 4. It says, And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again, another vessel, uh, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Uh, and and uh, one statement there uh, uh, is, is kind of odd. I never really thought about it this way before until uh, I was listening to, a, to an, an, another message, uh, uh, I don't know, sometime earlier in this week, and, uh, and he, hit, well, he hit on this on the point, and the Lord just really really made it stand out to me and, uh, and sent me there for today. But, but uh, it says that the clay was marred, in the hand of the potter. And I'd always, I, and, and this is an incorrect way to view this, I think, but, but, but I'd always viewed that uh, uh, as, as the potter messed up the clay. But the Lord pointed that out to me. That's not what that is. Uh, because the potter here, we've got to understand, the potter here, the Lord is using the potter to symbolize himself, uh, to symbolize his hand uh, upon the house of Israel, his hand uh, upon his people's lives, uh, and thereby his hands upon our lives. And he makes no mistakes. And yet, the vessel was still marred. 
And that word more, I, I, I looked up a, a, an actual definition for it. I was just going to say, uh, my, my kind of definition for it is it's messed up, but, but I, I looked up a real, you know, the kind of definition that smart people write, uh, and, and it says to impair the quality of, spoil, or ruin. Messed up. That's exactly right. But, but the point of the matter is, in the state that that vessel was in, uh, after it was marred, it could no longer do the purpose. It could no longer serve the purpose that the potter had for that vessel. Uh, it no longer had uh, uh, in, whatever, uh, in whatever capacity. It couldn't look as good as the potter desired it to. Or it couldn't hold water uh, the way that the potter would desire it to. But in some capacity, or to some degree, that vessel could not do, once it was marred, that vessel could not perform the work that the potter had it for it to do. And we'll get there in just a minute. Uh, but what we want to preach on for just a moment is messed up in the right place. Messed up in the right place. Because you see, uh, uh, even though the potter's hands were not what marred the vessel, uh, and we'll get to the things that, that could have marred that vessel in a moment, but even though it was not the potter's hands that marred the vessel, that vessel was marred. Oh, but it was still in the hands of the potter. The vessel might be marred. It might not have, it, it might not have been able uh, at that point in time uh, to, to perform the task that the potter had intended for it to do. Oh, but it was still in the hands of the potter. Amen. Still in the hands of the ones who could still make it able to do uh, uh, what he would have it to be able to do. Uh, uh, so so uh, we'll look at it for just a minute to, and we'll, we'll skip around a little bit tonight. But, but how did that vessel get marred? Well, we can eliminate the potter as being the problem. So that really only leaves two remaining components. There's the wheel, and there's the clay. And we'll, we'll look at those two things and, uh, and, and, and the things that they can represent here, but we'll start with the easy one. And I say easy one because that's the one where we can say it ain't our fault. And we'll, then we'll get to the other one in a minute. It's a problem with the wheel. Uh, in other words, uh, uh, there, there was not. It wasn't necessarily. Uh, uh, if it's a problem with the wheel, it doesn't matter uh, what the clay is. But so you can see the clay. If it, if it, it could be exactly where it's supposed to be at. It could be in the center of the wheel, exactly where the potter, the Lord, would have it to be, and yet the situation that it finds itself in could cause it to be marred. As in, uh, and I've watched videos of, of people making pottery on wheels, and it kind of amazes me how they do it, but, but, but if, if that wheel is not running correctly, uh, if, the, if the, the, the situation for the clay is not on a round wheel, uh, even though the potter's hands do not move, uh, uh, and why do I say the potter's hands do not move? Because he said in Malachi 3 and 6, I am the Lord, I change not. Right. So the potter's hands were constant. And if we're going with the problem being the wheel, then, then we can just uh, we'll, we'll assume for a minute that the clay was exactly how it was supposed to be and exactly where it needed to be, and yet it still found itself in a situation that would cause it to be more. What am I talking about? It's, uh, it's a lot easier to talk about it when you put it in terms of the Word of God. I'm going to turn to Mark chapter 4 for just a minute. I'm going to read it starting in verse 35. It said, In the same day, when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. That's Jesus talking to his disciples. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. So it's starting out pretty good. Uh, uh, the, the potter is going with the clay here. Uh, uh, he's go, he has told them where they need to be. And they're there. They're going to the other side. And He has given them an express purpose. The purpose that, uh, at this time is to go to the other side. Uh, uh, amen. We'll pause here for just a second. Let's just say sometimes we don't have to know uh, the entirety of our purpose. We just have to know that our purpose is to go to the other side and we'll get the rest of the instructions when we get there. Uh, uh, I'll just speak for myself when I say that if the Lord says go to the other side, I say what am I doing on the other side? And the Lord says just go to the other side and we'll figure it out. But when you get there. That's not related to the message tonight. That's a freebie. Uh, uh, but but uh, 35, 36. And there arose a great storm of wind. 
Now understand, they're right where the potter would have them to be. They're right in the center of the will of God. He is Jesus Christ in the flesh Himself has told them where to go, has put them on the ship, and is on the ship with them. And yet their circumstances are causing them to be marred. The circumstances, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? So they find themselves here marred. And remember, when we say that the vessel was marred, it was not capable of doing the task. Uh, it was hindered from doing the task uh, that the potter, the, that the Lord would have them to be doing. Uh, the task that He had given them was let us pass over uh, unto the other side. The circumstances they found themselves in was a storm that prevented them from passing over to the other side. It wasn't their fault. They didn't create a storm. Uh, they didn't go the wrong way. The Lord told them to go this way and they went that way. Amen. Sometimes we, we sail ourselves into storms that the Lord told us not to go into. Uh, I think about Paul uh, in, in the Europlodon. Uh, oh, it wasn't Paul's fault, uh, but the Lord had already sent warning through Paul said that we better not leave here. Oh, but their south wind blew softly and they decided they was going to go. Got them all shipwrecked on an island. That was a storm they put themselves in, but that's not the case here. They are exactly where the Lord has told them to be. And yet, it is His will that they be in that storm. But it is hindering the purpose that He's given them. Oh, but they're not, they're not out of the hands of the potter. They might be marred. They might be hindered from reaching that goal that the Lord has given them. Oh, but they're still in the hands of the potter. The Lord is still in the boat. And in verse 39, He gets up. Now, something I love about this passage, and I just can't read it without pointing it out, even though they were fearing for their lives, the ship was full. Now, understand, when a ship gets full of water, they don't float real long. That's, that's just a, you know, a redneck logic. If the bass boat's got more water in it than air, you've got a problem. And it said that it was now full. So it wasn't going to be floating for real long. But Jesus was unconcerned. He was asleep. Uh, when, when we talk about uh, having the peace which passeth all understanding, that is the definition of peace which passeth all understanding. Uh, Jesus said, in my peace I leave with you. That's the kind of peace He's talking about. Uh, right. When you're in the midst of the storm, when the boat's full, when it doesn't seem like it can float for much longer, He was taking a nap. That's the peace of Jesus Christ. But He arose. And rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. I'm thankful that we're in, when we're in the situation that prevents us from serving in the way that we have, He would have us to serve, He has power over that situation. He's, we're still, uh, when we're marred in that situation, we're still in the hand of the potter. Amen. But what we want to move on to now is the harder side of that. That when the problem is not with the wheel, but with the problem, the imperfection, the impurity, is with the clay. Yeah. Amen. Is with us, if I can say it that way. If the problem, when the problem is not uh, in, in, in what surrounds us. When the problem, uh, see, it's real easy when we can when we can just say, oh, uh, that problem is, is just part of life. It's a storm of life, or, or so-and-so else caused this problem. Oh, but when the problem, and I, I think of Clarence, uh, I, I'm not old enough to remember this, uh, uh, but I, I can just remember his example of it, and it makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, uh, when they used to, to, to send out a, a test signal uh, from the, from the uh, uh, TV stations, uh, when they had a problem and they would send out a signal that just says, the problem is not with your set. Sometimes the problem is with our set. Uh, uh, and that's where we want to get to uh, uh, on the other side of what could cause the vessel to be marred. Uh, and to do that, I want to look at John chapter 18 for a moment. Uh, beginning in verse 15, it said, And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple 
was known unto the high priest and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without. Then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. And skipping down to 25, And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. And it's so easy for us as we read about Peter's denial to look down our nose at him and say, well, the Lord done told you you was going to do it. You had the opportunity to stop. And when I, as immediately as I would begin that thought process, the, the, the very next thought is, oh, how many times has He warned me? Don't do that. Don't make that decision. Don't go that place. Don't talk to that person. Uh, don't, uh, don't say that thing. Uh, don't do that thing. Uh, uh, how many times has He warned me? Uh, uh, and yet, I did it. I made that decision. I made that sin. I made that failure. Uh, uh, so before we look down our nose at Peter, uh, we would be best uh, best served to look in the mirror. Amen. And that don't just apply, amen, I don't know, I didn't know why I was going here tonight, but that don't just apply when we're reading about uh, the, the, the people, the heroes, if I can say it that way, uh, or even the not-so-heroes in the Word of God. That applies to our neighbor. When it's so easy to, to look down uh, uh, at someone who, who, who's struggling with uh, whether it be addictions or whether it just be saying the wrong thing or, or, or whatever it may be. Uh, when it's so easy, uh, when we think it's so easy, I can say, uh, to look down our nose at somebody else and think, uh, and think that we are better than somebody else we've got to remember. Uh, and such were some of you. I'm a some of you Christian. That's also a freebie tonight. But... Looking here at the problem is in the clay. Here the problem is uh, the marring occurred not because uh, uh, the potter messed up, the potter gave the warning. Uh, not because there was a problem uh, with the scenario. Uh, uh, the Lord had already told, the, told what the scenario was going to be. Uh, he had already set it up to slain from the foundation of the world. Uh, uh, the, 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 it was not a problem with the scenario. It was a problem in the individual. It was Peter who sinned. It was, all, it was his own fault, and he knew it. But what I'm thankful for is it's not just when the marring comes from the situation that we're still in the hand of the potter. I'm thankful that it's not just, uh, uh, it, it's not just uh, uh, when it's beyond our control that he still cares. Let me turn here. I didn't know I was going to turn here. We're going to read it real quick. I don't have it memorized. You wait to give me a second. It's one of my favorite passages. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Does that mean that there's not condemnation for sin? No, that's not what that means. But Peter was still in the hand of the potter. How do I know? Because when I turn over to John 21, I find... Uh, and it's hard, you know, I got, if I don't know where you turn in the Bible, I've got a favorite passage somewhere around there. It's just how it is. It's a good book. Uh, but this, I'm, I'm going to say this is definitely top five. When Peter takes a walk with the Lord, and this is, a, this is not a walk before sin. This is not a, a walk that says uh, you've done perfect. But this is a walk with the Lord of restoration. 
And oh, I'm thankful for the walks of restoration that he's had with me. I'm thankful for those times that, that he's come and he said, uh, uh, and he's communed with me and he, and, and he said, I know you've done wrong, but I still love you. Just repent. I know you're. I know you're not where you need to be. I know. I know you made the wrong decision. I know you've sinned. It's not a secret. Uh, but just repent. And that's what we see going on here uh, in John 21, beginning in verse 15. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved, because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto you, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. And the Lord pointed something out to me here that I... Well, I, I'll point out, and I know I've said this before, I know Clarence has said this here before, but I just left it and I'm going to say it again. He asked him three times, do you love me? Because he denied him three times. He's a God of details, and he knows exactly what we need to hear, when we need to hear it. Uh, uh, but the, the, the new thought that he gave me here, he didn't say anything about the past. He just said, follow me. I can't go back and change decisions I've made in the past. Oh, but I can follow him today. Yeah. I can't go back and uh, Peter, Peter couldn't go back and, and say uh, uh, and not deny him those three times all, but he could follow him from then on. He could be there at the day of Pentecost uh, when the Holy Spirit fell and, and, and preach a message and see the, the thousands of people turn their life to Christ. Uh, he couldn't go back. Uh, uh, and, and I, I, I think about it this way. I, I just picture Peter after he's denied the Lord in front of all these people uh, thinking, I can't be used anymore. Uh, I, I'm marred beyond usage. Uh, this vessel is broken. It'll never hold water again. Uh, uh, it's not a cosmetic imperfection. Uh, uh, this is not one you're going to find in the seconds room uh, at the yes to store and still be able to use it and not tell nobody no different. This one's broken. But what we see is broken. The potter doesn't see that. What I love from our text verse is this and we'll close. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of prop, the, the potter. And he doesn't say so he tossed it out and grabbed another lump. He doesn't say so he just did the best he could with what was there and made something that couldn't do what it was supposed to do, but it'll be all right. He doesn't say that some of those clay, clay lumps were worthless. He just says, so he made it again. So he made it again, another vessel. But he didn't just make it another vessel. The next line, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Yeah. He doesn't just throw it away, away the clay. He makes it again into something that better than it was before. Amen. Better than it ever was before uh, uh, as it seemed good. Although it was barred. Although uh, it was ruined. He made it into something as it seemed good to him. Let us pray. Lord Heavenly Father, yes. we thank you. Lord, you're the best thing that's ever happened to us. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you've not thrown us away. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your love and for your mercy upon our lives. Lord, I pray, Lord, tonight if there be one that is marred, Lord, they remember they're still in the hand of the potter. And Lord, that you're able to make it again. So Lord, I pray if there be one, Lord, that needs to be made again tonight. Whether it's, uh, whether it's through hurt, whether it's through pain, whether it's through sin, whatever it is, Lord. Whether it's through situations, that they would know that you have power over that. And you're able to make it again. 
So we love you, Lord, and we thank you. Have your way, Lord. Take these few words and apply them to our hearts. In the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs>